Today, we are investigating one of the biggest trends in the food industry, organic food. Specifically, what do we get when we buy organic food? And not what we assume we should get, but by law, what are we guaranteed when we buy organic products? Let's get into it. The organic movement was born out of a response to the increased use of pesticides, fertilizers, other substances being sprayed on our field of crops. So what the organic movement says is we are going to limit what substances can be used to produce food and we are only going to use certain growing techniques to produce our crops. Now, if you want to buy certified organic food in the grocery store, what you need to look for is this symbol that says USDA organic. So if a food has the symbol, sometimes it's in green as well, it means that the United States Department of Agriculture or the USDA has certified that this farmer or processor is approved as an organic farmer. So if you don't see that, the, they have not gone through in this very long process to prove that, that this food has been grown organically. And I wanna show you just how tricky this process to become an organic farmer is. So they have to pull together a bunch of documentation seen here. So this is no easy process and this is expensive. You have to pay money to apply for organic certification. And it can also take up to three years before you can even label your food organic. And that's because the sort of hardest part is this field history. So to become an organic field, you need to have a three year history of exactly what crops were grown and what fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, anything else, any other input was used on that field for the past three years. Because the organic movement sort of limits what substances can be applied on the field, they want to make sure if you, you know, previously had used one of these prohibited substances, you have to actually wait three years from that use until your field is considered organic. So this process is hard, it's tedious, and it can take up to years. So becoming certified organic is no easy feet. And then once you become certified organic, you have to renew that every single year and you pay a fee every single year. So you can start to see why organic food is really expensive because the whole process to become organic certified is very expensive. Now, what I've seen some food manufacturers start to do, I've seen Kashi. If you if you look at some of their cereals, instead of the USDA organic symbol, they actually have this transitional symbol. So this little symbol says that they're transitioning to organic farming. So they're probably in that three year process of proving that they have organic fields, but they have not yet become certified. So the back of the box always explains this. It says the cereal is not organic because it's not organic yet, they're on their way to becoming organic. So you can see this is a pretty tricky process, but now that you see how hard it is to apply for organic certification, let's dive into the details of organic food. To get organic food, we must first grow organic crops. And this involves a lot of rules and regulations. The first being you have to start with organic seeds and they cannot be genetically modified. The only time you can sort of get around this rule is if no organic seeds are available, then you can use conventional seeds. But once the seeds are in the ground, there's even more rules. And there's actually this really long list of different pesticides, fertilizers, substances that an organic farmer cannot use. And these cannot even come in contact with any crops in the field or it's not allowed to be called organic. 
So someone who's farming an organic field has a much smaller toolbox than conventional farmers. This means they have to treat the field with very different techniques to keep you know, pests and weeds down. So organic farmers are more likely to spread mulch and that would prevent soil erosion and weeds. Maybe they add a cover crop to prevent weeds from growing. They might even use um, some cow manure or compost to get more nutrients into the field. And to keep pests down, farmers often have to rotate through crops. They can't plant the same thing over and over again. And this can prevent particular pests from taking over the field. But overall, it's quite labor intensive to grow these organic crops just because you're really limited on what you're allowed to use to grow organic food. All right, so I wanna show you where you can find exactly what pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, fertilizers, etc., that can be used for organic farming. And you can find this list, it's called the National List of Allowed and Prohibited Substances. So there's only two big general rules, although I'll show you there are some exceptions. But rule number one, assume that any synthetic substance, so that's maybe what we make in a lab or can be made in a factory, assume you cannot use these synthetic substances unless the rules specifically say that you can. Rule number two, you can assume that you can use any non-synthetic or natural substance unless the rules specifically say you can't. So those are the two big rules, but let me show you that there's quite a few exceptions and it gets pretty complicated. So this is the CFR or Code of Federal Regulations. This is where you can find a lot of different food laws. And so the CFR, I'm in part 205, which is the National Organic Program. And then I've picked subpart G. And this is a pretty long section, but this includes that national list of allowed and prohibited substances. And what you can see here is you can find the synthetic substances that are allowed for crop production, for organic crop production. So those are the exceptions to the rule. You can also find the non-synthetic substances. And then the same can be found if you're raising livestock for organic, you know, meats, milk, or eggs. So let's check this out a little closer. What are some synthetic substances that can be used for organic crop production? And you'll see this is uh, actually a pretty long list. So I'm not going to go over each and every one of these, but this, all these are actually synthetic substances that are in an organic farmer's toolbox to help them sort of handle weeds and different pests. So there's quite a few exceptions to this. We could check out the same list for livestock or organic livestock. So what are the synthetic substances you can use when raising, you know, cows or sheep or that sort of thing. And again, you'll see there's, there's a decent amount of these substances in an organic farmer's toolbox. So there are quite a few of exceptions to those two general rules. But if you wanna check out more about this list, I would go to the CFR, the eCFR, that's Electronic Code of Federal Regulations.gov, and pick subpart 205, the National Organic Program, and from there go to subpart G for that national list. Now to organic animal products. So these are things like milk, eggs, and any type of meat. And the differences between organic and the conventional animal products starts out really early in the animal's life. So something like a cow actually must have an organic diet during the last third of gestation, so even before it's born. Something like chicken is a little bit different. So for chicken, you could get the eggs of the chicks from any source, but by the second day of their life, they must be on organic feed. There's a lot of other rules regarding the conditions that these animals are raised in. And this includes requirements that they have access to the outdoors, that they also have access to a shelter, that they could get direct sunlight, that there's areas of shade. 
And if you have a grazing animal, so maybe something like a cow or sheep or goat, they must be out grazing in a pasture for the entire grazing season, which is usually over 120 days. So any grazing animal must be allowed outside during the grazing season. The two other big differences are that you cannot use any antibiotics or give any antibiotics to these animals, and you cannot use growth hormones. So antibiotics is a bit of a tricky one. It sometimes puts farmers in a sticky situation because what do you do if your animals do get sick and they do need that antibiotic because you don't want to withhold medical treatment, but if you give that animal an antibiotic, you cannot sell it as organic. So you're probably losing money whenever you have to treat an animal with an antibiotic. Well, I hope that clears up some differences between organic foods and their conventional counterparts. And now when you pay, you know, two, three times the price for an organic product, you know exactly why you're paying that steep price. I'll talk to you next time. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comments section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.